and welcome back to Literally Literary. If this is your first time joining us, be sure to check out our previous episodes. This episode, we will begin our discussion on Patron Saints of Nothing by Randy Rebe. My name is Vanessa, and this is Literally Literary, which is brought to you by the Mellon Foundation through the Humanities Collaborative at EPCC and UTEP. Yo, hey. <laughs> so we had just finished talking about... Um... A border, a border connection. And so we're moving from the border to the Philippines. Um, and we wanted to tell you listeners why we decided to do that. You know, start off the new year, um, 2020, in the new ne- decade. Uh, so Vanessa, did you want to tell um, our audience about why you chose this book in particular? How it came about? Hmm. Well, there's actually a lot of reasons why. And I think the biggest one is that when we went to the Texas Book Festival, I actually sat down in a panel and heard him speak about this book. And when I heard him talk about it, I was like, oh, okay, yeah, that's cool. But then I actually sat down and started reading it, and I was like, oh, my God, this is amazing. And I haven't been able to, like, put it down because it's, like, really good. Yeah. And, and um, it is a National Book Award finalist, and mm-hmm. I think um, it's the first one that we have in, in amongst – the ones we've done so far that is one um and it's i think also the first book we're doing that is set in a whole other country for the most part Mm -hmm. uh, other than you know the border in mexico um uh so before we 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 dive into you know the nitty-gritty and the nuances as you were seeing richie about the characters and the plot um what are your y'all's first initial impressions of the book? Uh, some things that jump out at you guys about uh-huh. the the story here of um, of um, Jay. Jay and yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, and, and June. I mean, there's just so many things that like catch my attention. The language is so good. It just like the way it's written. It's beautifully written. Mm-hmm. It's like it flows really nicely, mm-hmm. and it's. Very good language. <laughs> yeah, reminding me, the style reminds me a lot of Ben Sines. Mm-hmm. The the crisp sentences, mm-hmm. um, those lines that you you mentioned just kind of hit you. <coughs> you know, poetic, right? I appreciate the, that. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's the kind of thing thing that draws you on along if you're a reader. You know, mm-hmm. if you enjoy books, mm-hmm. literature, and and not just the act of it, but the art of it. Mm-hmm. You know, he has a, a pretty, pretty fresh voice, I think, that mm-hmm. is able to place you into the situation, you know, what you're reading, context, you know, and, and but also just, you know, like these lines that um, I, I appreciate these, these small chapter format mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It makes it a lot more digestible, mm-hmm. you know, and um, by doing so. Each chapter has like a little bit of a theme. That's something that you were talking about earlier, Vanessa, is yes. how, you know, he kind of ends these chapters with like a, a theme or that's a, mm-hmm. the chapters are titled, right? Mm-hmm. Right. That's one of the things you noticed. I, I uh, <clears throat> you know, I've been really appreciating that. And it's almost like um, <laughs> episodic in a way mm. where mm-hmm. like since there are these little, little, as the story progresses, it reminds me of like when a when a really good TV show you start binge watching, mm-hmm. it's that cliffhanger, mm-hmm. right? And some of, some of the chapters end in these really powerful, cool lines that are are more poetic in a way mm-hmm. and like of, of overall theme. Mm-hmm. And it was like, oh, I gotta watch the next episode. Ooh, right to the yeah. next chapter. Yeah. And so that was fresh for me. That where it is such an easy read to just sit mm-hmm. down if you ha- if you had the time, one sitting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think in that sense, it's kind of like a short story collection in that. You know, mm. the way that the chapters end, they just really, like you say, um, finish with that strong line that yeah. you really get to kind of um, really encapsulates the whole chapter. Mm-hmm. 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 And uh, yeah, that's simply one of the standout things to me, too. Uh, <clears throat> going back to, 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 well, seeing on the style, um, you, Vanessa, had mentioned that, and I think in the panel he brought this up too, about the language use, mm-hmm. the use of um, oh, Tagalog. Yes. yes. So um, the main character, Jay, or Jason, um, is also not so in touch with his father's mm-hmm. 
side. I guess. Yeah, like the immigration kind of. Yeah. Yeah. So he's very much from Michigan. Like he doesn't really have a lot of the Filipino. So when he finally does end up going and he's like learning about his culture and his his ancestors' history, um, he's also learning some of the words that they use. Mm -hmm. And so during the panel that I was listening to Randy talk, he kind of mentioned that as Jay is learning the language, you'll see the words italicized like you would foreign words. But as Jason learns the words, they're no longer italicized because they're no longer foreign because he knows them. He assimilates them into his language as, mm-hmm. as he picks them up. And, and I think... Um, and as such, us as the readers. Yeah, yeah. readers too, sure. for sure. Um, it, it's it's definitely something that we've, we, um, we have talked about with Ben Sines as well, right? Mm-hmm. It's like why he italicizes mm-hmm. things. And there's the, uh, the, you know, he, I know, I remember Ben had mentioned that it's it's my language, right? And so that's why sometimes he doesn't italicize it like it's a language he grew up with Spanish. Um, mm-hmm. And in this case, it's um, it's it's almost the opposite, right? Because you were saying that he's fully assimilated as an American, you know, mm-hmm. Mich- Michiganer, right? And uh, slowly he's becoming more in touch with his Filipino side mm-hmm. of his heritage, uh, his roots. Right. And... Um, what was the epigraph at the beginning about hyphens? Like the before even the dedication, I think. For the hyphenated. For mm-hmm. the hyphenated. Mm-hmm. Right. I think the first time uh Filipino and America are next to each other, there's no hyphen. Yeah. That's definitely I think another choice there, you know. Yeah, I had I hadn't thought about that. That's mm-hmm. a that's a really good ob- yeah. observation. <clears throat> and so um I think something that also in addition to style thematically Mm -hmm. i think um especially early early on touches upon themes from uh, other book discussions we've had you Mm -hmm. know Mm -hmm. because you do deal a lot with with immigration and kind of being removed um family Mm -hmm. right Right. relationships and families and and uh injustices really trying to find truth and even the the helplessness of Mm -hmm. in the face of um violence that you can't comprehend and um, is part of a larger system, you know, like even the government authority. Yeah, so that system, um, you know, is 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 based on reality, right? So this yes. is in science fiction, and mm. and currently it's what's going on with uh, the president of the Philippines, uh, President Duterte, yeah. that is like you said, you know, um, he he announced this kind of. Um, you know, tough and crime thing that morphed into more of um, extrajudicial, like you said, killings of, of people who are suspected or in some cases just random people on the streets that they pick up. From political opponents political to... Political opponents. Just people maybe they don't agree with. <laughs> you know, people who get on the list, you know, and um, I think... Um, you know the the obvious connection to me is is with um, you know Ben Sines' collection and of course uh, it's the same thing that's happening in Mexico you know so I, I was not in my head as I was reading this because it's like the same thing mm-hmm. um, and um, so there is that I I do like that Randy brings in that history mm-hmm. um. History itself, I think, is another big theme, and yeah. outside yeah. of the presidential mm-hmm. regime, mm-hmm. the the dictator that he is, <clears throat> I think it's fair to say. Um, what do you guys think he's saying about history in in a postmodern way, or just in a general way? Hmm. Well, I did want to mention that I feel like it's a little bit more extreme than what is even just mm. because it's not just like the government it's like even a citizen if they suspect them they can just be like oh you're dead yeah yeah that's insane yeah yeah well going to your <clears throat> postmodernist comment you know um very early on uh, jay starts to question what he knows you know the, the whole narrative structure 
is is um, he starts to think about truth again. Mm-hmm. What is the nature of truth? How is it received? Mm-hmm. And so he talks a lot about the media and how you know it's portrayed, built up when he's researching. And of course, um, you know something we haven't mentioned. The catalyst, right, is his, is his cousin June that he kind of had this connection with, and this part is the mystery of what happened to him. Mm-hmm. Um, as he's researching the you know what's happening, right. Um, one of the things that he counts looks up is like just the way the media reports all of these things, you know, the, the mm-hmm. bias and slant. Mm-hmm. One thing that I thought was interesting is, you know, uh, <clears throat> the I mean, the attention to the violence, right? We've mm-hmm. talked about that mm-hmm. as well. But ultimately, right, go, going back, take a step back, sorry. The postmodern element of like questioning the mm-hmm. truth mm-hmm. systems, you know, history, mm-hmm. right, as it's told to us. Mm-hmm. And I think... Um, you, you know, there's several times where he he realizes that things aren't the way we we, we were told. You know, and yeah. He questions it a lot. Who's how, who's who's been lying? How are things fabricated? How are these sold? Yeah. You know, we are the headline culture. He even uses that line, mm-hmm. headline culture, because mm-hmm. it's very like surface level yeah. way of in yeah. which we construct narratives and consume and exactly. And and it seems you know in that same vein the idea of a counter narrative. You know, which is very postmodern in the sense that it's how you resist these regimes and their truth. And, you know, we were talking before this podcast, as we always do, that uh, it reminded us both of um, Brief Wonder's Life of Oscar Wilde by Juno Diaz in the same way that he's writing about uh, the Dominican Republic. Mm-hmm. It's, um, you know, what Trujillo did as dictator there is, is very similar in the sense that you know, there's that um, suppression of, of freedoms. And uh, so there's a this paranoia that just builds up because you don't know who to trust, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, there, there's definitely um, uh, a lot of that as, as, as the novel progresses. And I will say it's, it's, a, it's a major theme to me that stands out. Yeah. And media bias, you know, goes back to uh, Khalil, you know, hate you give. Exactly. Right. Um, Vanessa, you were saying that it reminded you of, well, it contrasted with the violence in Juarez. Um, but what's what's another thing that maybe not contrasted, but that you found similarities to or maybe not something mm-hmm. we, we already read, but like something you're... Dang. Uh-huh. I feel like there's a couple, but I can't think any <clears throat> like of any on the top of my head. Mm-hmm. Um, the whole idea of like him traveling, you know, and um, his um, his uh, family who he hasn't seen in a while from the Philippines, right? His cousins and and titas and and titos and um, who. Um, you know, he feels disconnected from, right? Mm-hmm. And um, it, it's kind of like that thing where you have an image of a country and once you go there, it's eye-opening. And, yeah. Um, think of Passage to India. I think of that right away. Yeah. Ian Forster. Yeah. And that's like, um, wait, is that? Yeah. It's the idea that there's no one image mm. of a place. Yeah, I haven't read that one, actually. Um uh, Took that uh that uh British lit class with Dr. J. <laughs> yeah. But so it's a post colonial. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, uh, you know, as you're looking, you <clears throat> mentioned um, the June and the mystery, right? And uh-huh. um, there's um, the um, the the letter writing that plays a, a big important role because that's the only way that he does have that connection back to his home his yeah. home country. Yeah his roots and um you know we, we've seen a letter before in uh, sometimes the rain as neto gets a letter from um you know his unrequited love uh from vietnam and um we also get um you know there's epistolary novels as well you know and so i like how there's this mm-hmm. micro narrative that is building through the the letters that they're changing you know, and um, finding out June through the letters, finding out about him, right? Because, you know, this is like Rosa Emily where, he, um, 
without spoiling it, like we don't really know. He's not a character in in the reality that uh, Jay is seeing. We only find out about him through the letters and what his family says about him. But that's where it gets tricky, right? Because just like brother in another language, um, he, he's he's disavowed by his family, right? Like even mentioning his name seems mm-hmm. like taboo. Right. Seems completely, you know, um, um, peculiar to say the least, right? I mean, his family. But you really begin to wonder, well, what is it that he could have done for his family to react in that way? Um, so that was another thing. Mm-hmm. What else, Vanessa? So um, it is a YA novel. Mm-hmm. But it's not, he mentioned in the panel that he didn't feel like the way we shelter kids is good. Mm. So that kids need to be more aware of what's happening in the world. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they don't need like the explicit, explicit details, but Mm -hmm. at least to know what's going on in the world. Mm -hmm. And so I like that this book has a lot of like history and it's, it talks about it. So you get to understand why the country has become the way it has yeah so I, I like mean, that it, i don't know about you guys but it made me want to look it up you know like look up on wikipedia like his regime and like yeah. what, what's going on you know because yeah i mean i didn't really know too much about this mm-hmm. if anything um and, and and yeah that that is a good point right that american culture seems to to some degree to shelter Mm-hmm. And in part, you know, parents are like that because they want to protect their kids, right. et cetera, you know. Um, but it seems like in, in the, um, th- th- I would say that that's a theme too, is like him gradually breaking out of that bubble mm-hmm. and seeing reality for what it is. Yeah. Um, being brave. So this reminded me of, La, of um, you know, um, they you give because it's about finding the courage to stand up for what's right mm. even if you know yeah. that you know people are, there's going to be backlash mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um it, it's similar also to black clansmen in that you know just like with him he was taking that risk of that dual identity and being caught mm-hmm. uh even his own department not really being in favor of it um so i think there, there's a lot of that uh, as the novel progresses that you do end up seeing in, in different ways. And um, so I, I, I definitely like how Jay as a character kind of comes into his own and we'll get to the passages later on in the, mm-hmm. in the next episode, but yeah. that, yeah, that's definitely one big thing. Mm-hmm. Do you feel that way in America yourself? Like since you're the, I mean, I had no generation. idea about what was going on in the Philippines. Yeah. Like, no prior knowledge. Yeah. So I started reading it, and I was like, I was really curious. I actually did Google it, and I was, like, reading articles about it. I was like, this is crazy. Yeah. So, but, like, the way that it's written in the book, it's not, like, it tells you everything that's going on, but it's it doesn't have the explicits. Mm-hmm. I think it's just examples of what's happening. So yeah, I think, I think that that's, like, a good introduction for people. Mm-hmm. And and you mentioned the YA label, and I mm-hmm. think um, maybe Randy would agree that it's kind of just like the canon. It's kind of like a social construct, you know, like whatever makes this YA. I mean, he happens to be young, and it's for young adults, but it's the same, you know, it doesn't mean it's not for, you know, mm-hmm. the older generation, right? right? Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. Was there something you were going to say about what <clears throat> she said? About? Um, the... The way that Randy deals with, um, you were mentioning the the Instagram that is mentioned, the accounts that he gets, uh, the messages he gets, I mean, yeah, and uh, how it shows or the eyewitness accounts, remember? Right. I mean, that kind of goes back to, to what we were talking about earlier, like how how we receive information and, and construct narratives, you know, and and I think that's one of the things that. Uh, <clears throat> One of, I'm sure, many instances in which um, he quit, he starts to realize there's more to it than than there is, um, and so he gets, you know, when when um, he gets an Instagram message from a strange account, right, in the Philippines, and mm-hmm. he gets some links, and of course he he doesn't click on them, but once 
uh, whoever sending these messages mentions his cousin, mm-hmm. sends a photograph. Well, obviously, it piques his interest, and the links end up being articles of what's going on. So, of course, the mm-hmm. first one, and, you know, and so prior to this, he had already been researching it because he, he felt guilt, right? Um, Jay felt guilt already about not knowing about this, even though like it's part of where he's from. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. He even felt a little a little guilt that his friend Seth knew maybe was a little bit more aware of it too mm-hmm. than he was. Mm-hmm. And so, but he spent a couple of days after, you know, because again, I think he says truth is hungry. And, and one of the things he, he just wanted to know more about mm-hmm. what happened. But anyway, so once he gets this Instagram account, it's the second link, the second article, I think that kind of um, starts to topple some of the main mainstream media myths of what's going on and, and really pointing out that, there's some real crimes against humanity happening in this during Duterte's administration, the way they're taking people and framing them, and and a lot of this comes from eyewitness accounts, from mm-hmm. self, you know, cell phone footage or, or security footage. Mm-hmm. Um, and he, you know, there's this passage, and we'll talk about it more next episode. But I mean, this is where this this whole main narrative and him, I think, his guilt of losing contact with his cousin. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And these letters is one of these things that really drives him to want to go. Again, talking about seeking the courage to mm-hmm. his first time traveling out to himself by himself because his mom really wants to go with him, right? At first. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it, it kind of, you know, thinking of the hate you give, mm-hmm. you know, the way that it's like the apathy of like classmates and the way they we react to things. He mentions how they read Nights by Ellie Wiesel. Mm-hmm. Right, which is a teenager's account of the Holocaust. This is almost a very postmodern element of the book as well, where here we are as readers reading about these accounts that are actually happening. Mm-hmm. You know, <clears throat> what are we going to do about it? It's that question. Mm-hmm. Because at the end of night, um, he talks about they had the commencement speech. We still won, was it um, Nobel Peace Prize? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and so that's a huge aspect of the book. Is at the end, it, it, you know, talk about his speech and. Jay talks about how, you know, people in his class were like, this is wrong. We, you know, we're not going to be like this. We'll be better. But he talks about like the hypocrisy of like, you know, some of the more vocal students. He would see bullying people around class. And it's very much reminds me of the hate you give when, you know, they talk about the shooting of Khalil. And yeah, they're they're not really quite there. The apathy. Um, It's that that thing that all this stuff together that guilt that triggers him to actually take action you know and I, I feel that is that almost postmodern commentary that we are reading as readers how are we going to react to hearing of these crimes that are happening yeah i i, I will say you know that's definitely something that is well developed and um you, you mentioned again the hit you give and uh you had said um what it also reminded me of hit you give not just the the protagonist's courage to to um, speak up uh but the family conflict Mm. you know because um just like tito manning who's um in the police force um there's a is it uncle hector carlos carlos Carlos. sorry yeah uncle carlos uncle common yeah yeah um you know and, and it's that same conflict right that um they provide you like uh, a way of looking at things, but you wonder, well, what is the truth here, right? And so, I'll, um, I think, um, you know, with, with, with Tito Manning, it's um, it's the same thing, and it, it definitely gets more complicated, I'll say. Right. Um, so we'll dive into that, you know, the next episode, uh, or maybe the last episode, you know, once we get to the end. Um, anything else about the for readers to know about the the setting um the the culture or any other mm. themes i mean as you meant as you mentioned you know it's it's the philippines so it's definitely a lot further away and moved we moved here but obviously for for jay and his family they uh we still we're still in, still dealing with uh an immigrant experience and someone growing up kind of disconnected from that culture and so you know again all a lot of those themes show up and it's post-colonial too, you know, mm-hmm. because uh, it does mention like, um, you know, the, the Spanish Empire having uh, colonized there, 
and um you know um so that the, there's a lot there to say about um having pride in in your own culture yeah without having it be colonized uh or i mean it already is colonized but like how do people deal with that mm -hmm. yeah. and so i think a lot of this book is about um just like uh, the collection and hit you give uh trauma mm -hmm. and um it's vicarious trauma because it's it's you and you know and and it seems that the family has the very simple way of dealing with it which is this disavow and denial yeah. uh, but with jay you know it's a very um in interrogative literally way of uh finding you know uh, speaking truth to justice right and uh it's justice that he feels as you mentioned guilty be because of that you know the, the fact he never got back to because of so-called the uh, first world problems mm -hmm. yeah there's there's several of those instances um I think we'll we'll dive more into quotes and explication in future episodes, but um, I definitely fell on that the theme, right? Of of all these stories are the same, you know that of injustice mm -hmm. and and the need to find that truth and expose it. Yeah, and then of course, uh, detective fiction is such a huge genre as well. I mean, so it's cool to dive. I mean, detective in the sense that he's trying to get mm -hmm. at the, at the yeah, core of absolutely. something. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, I'd mentioned that detective and I would see it in some degree like noir even. It's got some noir elements to me and, mm -hmm. and noir is one of my favorite genres and um, I, I I like it because, um, you know, there's always that kind of, well, are they going to get caught, Yeah. you know, um, as they're digging up this, right? Are they going to mm -hmm. get embroiled in something that's it's too big? Bigger for than them. themselves, yeah. Mm -hmm. And and nor I also like the idea of like um, you know crooked cops and you know uh, mm -hmm. you don't know who to trust right you get backstabbers mm -hmm. and things like that mm -hmm. so that's another mm -hmm. element that I see in this connect in this novel. Something else, Vanessa. Um. I like that it's his senior year. I feel like we haven't mentioned mm -hmm. that. It's like this is taking place during his spring break. Like this is mm -hmm. what he wanted to do with his. Free time from school. Yeah. I like the way he negotiates with his parents, too. Mm -hmm. You know, um, mm -hmm. he has to kind of sell it, but <laughs> he does it in, I think, a pretty clever mm -hmm. way. Like Without mentioning June. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's like, hey, you're going to give me a gift anyway. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean, the, the white lie, you know, and um, there's, I think, different kinds of lies in yeah. this collection that you have mentioned about truth and people, sheltering people, you know, that's a white mm -hmm. lie. You know, that, um, yeah, that's like when he asks his mom about does she lie to patients? And yeah, she says, Well, I mean, sometimes they, they have me lie to their families, mm -hmm. so you know, they're more at peace, you know, with whatever is happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's one kind of lie, and so it's when people hold back, you know, the reasoning behind it, like you know, they have their ethical reasons for doing so, right? And that's where it gets complicated. Um, but uh, I'm really, I'm really looking forward to getting into the the specific uh, strong lines that we have yeah. next time around. Mm -hmm. Thanks for joining us in our discussion on Patron Saints of Nothing by Randy Rebay. Join us on our next episode as we continue the discussion. And if you haven't read it, we hope we inspire you to pick up a copy. Follow us on Instagram at literallyliterary.ep.